This is the inside of the Kings Bowl area at the southern end of Craters of the Moon National Monument. Uh, I had a video I put together that you can look for that talks about this eruption and the geology here uh, up at the surface where I point out some cool features. But there's actually uh, a way to get down in this thing. So I thought it might be fun to shoot a short video uh, showing some of the cool features you see both in the walls of the sides of the fissure um, and then down looking at the bottom of the fissure itself. Um, and so there's a little path here. And the first thing is you can kind of see all these stacked uh, flows right here. These are all from the eruptive event 2,200 years ago from this, this volcanic vent. So all of this is stacked lavas, just you know, one lava flow oozing out, covering the other, kind of like pancake batter, um, covering the landscape until you get about here. Uh, and this big break here, from here down, these are older lavas. So these are lavas that erupted probably from localized shield volcanoes or other vents uh, in the area. It's all basalt still, um, but sometimes what we do as geologists is try to count how many flow units or cooling units or, or ind individual lava flows there are. If I wheel over to the other side, you can see a pretty prominent break or a crack running through uh, the wall over there. And that I believe is also, you know, so the upper 10 to 12 feet is all lava and real estate that was added when this thing erupted. But everything below this point is older lavas. Um, but they give us a cool couple cool features here. We have this sort of profile view through these basalt flows. And so this kind of gives us a view we don't often get in other places. Usually basalt flows have uh, these bus bubbles, these gas bubbles on the surface near the top um, of the flow. These are called vesicles. So these are nothing more than gases that are trying to escape the lava. As they get closer to the lava flow, there's less pressure, overlying pressure on them. So they're able to expand and form uh, bubbles that are large enough to see with the naked eye. Um, we kind of move along here. Let's see, what else is there? Um, this is pretty cool here. You can actually see, if I kind of get down there a little bit, or maybe back in here, you can see a little brown layer in between these lava flows. And that's just a little layer of soil. Uh, it shows up over here a little bit thicker. So this is what we call a paleosol. This is a soil horizon between two lava flows. Um, and sometimes we can find material in here that can be dated. Um, but if, if anything, it lets us know that there was some period of time between the eruption of the underlying flow and the one above, because you had to have time for the lavas to maybe to get weathered, or maybe some of this stuff was blown in by the wind, but you had to develop some soils in order for the next flow to uh, cover it. Uh, this might've been in some little depression here, and that's why it's quite thicker. If you actually kind of trace it to the left, you can see that the, the soil kind of pinches out and the two lava flows are sitting one on top of another. Um, right here on the surface of this flow has some of these nice smooth ropey surfaces. This is what we call pahoehoe. So this is uh, very common on the tops of these lava flows. Um, this lava flow is a little different color. Looks like it has some uh, little white crystals in it. And then the other thing that it has that's kind of interesting is you can see chains of vesicles that go vertically. These are called pipe vesicles. So this might be where um, vesicles sort of coalesce and nucleate together and then rise vertically um, up through the lava flow, even though there's substantial pressure on them. We can actually see the, the contact here with this. On, here's another flow below it, and here's the bottom of this flow right here, and these pipe vesicles kind of coming out of them. In some places, you can tell, I'm not sure I'm convinced here, but sometimes we can see these pipe vesicles uh, tilted or oriented kind of like dominoes, um, something like this. And maybe these ones are crudely showing that this way. I'm not totally convinced, but maybe. And if that's the case, if you can convince yourself there's a, there's a preferred orientation of these, that sometimes indicates which way the lava was flowing. So as these vesicles are rising, if the lava is still moving, they kind of rotate it over uh, to some other orientation. So another flow here, more pipe vesicles in this flow above. So we're going down a little further. Um, there's some of the snow 
It's, uh, let's see, May 6th, there's a patch of snow. So this thing is so deep and shaded from the sun that it has snow, um, you know, into the early part of summer. At some point, the sun will get a little higher, the air will get, get a little warmer and that'll melt out. Um, but these, these deep fissures, just like lava tubes, are places, I'm sure when I get down here at the bottom, it'll feel a lot colder. That's why the snow is kind of hanging on there as well. Um, these places, uh, in fact, just north of here, um, there was a place that was a common uh, tourist attraction, I guess, maybe in the 70s and 80s, called Crystal Ice Cave. And so this same fissure system uh, has a cave system that you can go through. Um, and because it's so insulated and so deep, the water that seeps down through the basalt uh, freezes and there's ice in there. They've closed it off since then because these are pretty unstable areas. In fact, you can kind of see the whole wall of Kings Bowl here is fractured and all this rock is teetering and probably going to fall at some point soon, um, geologically anyway. You can imagine all the water getting in there and freeze thaw, freeze thaw. And so the walls of this thing are um, quite unstable and that's why they kind of want people to kind of stay out as much as possible. So we'll we'll just go down here to the fissure itself, the kind of lowest point you can get to on this end. And of course this won't come across in the video, but already I can feel it's like quite a bit colder down here. It's probably like 70-ish degrees up, up top, but down here uh, in the fissure, it's definitely a lot colder. Uh, and so here's sort of the inner view of this fissure you're looking at an eruptive event you can actually see here oh wow this is cool this is actually where some of the lava drip back down into the fissure these long uh sort of drip features here kind of like a stalactite um uh and uh, just stuck to the wall so this is the actual vent 2200 years ago this is where lava was rising to the surface which is ironic because it was obviously very hot then and now on a nice warm summer day, this is the coolest place to be temperature wise. So uh, pretty incredible. There's the view up towards uh, the sky, King's Bowl.